Okay. Of course, what you really care about in your measurements is the total amount of noise, but more importantly, the ratio of the signal to the noise. In other words, the, and let me go grab a highlighter here, so I can highlight what I'm talking about, is not the noise so much as the amount of signal divided by the noise, either in current or in terms of voltage. If you have a very big signal and very small noise, that's good. Even if you have a lot of noise, if you have a big signal, you can still get very good measurements. And this is typically known as the signal-to-noise ratio, or S over N is how people talk about it, or signal-to-noise. The general rule of thumb for the smallest signal you can detect is when the signal-to-noise ratio is equal to 1, or the, the current from your signal is exactly equal to the RMS current of your noise. Um, for sound noise, it's very important to note that the signal to noise is proportional to the current, and the noise from sound noise is proportional to the square root of current. So in this case, in many, many types of measurements, the signal to noise ratio is proportional to the square root of your current. This means if you have a larger signal, your signal to noise ratio improves. If you're, you make your signal four times bigger, your signal-to-noise ratio will improve by a factor of two, assuming that shot noise is what's limiting you. In general, uh, you measure more signal the longer you integrate, average, or accumulate any type of signal. And so what this comes out to, and this is an extremely important point, is that in most types of measurements, your signal-to-noise ratio is proportional to the square root of n, where n is either the number of measurements you do, how long you do a measurement, or how long you integrate your measurement. Um, and we can see that on this slide right here. Let me go back and grab a pen. Um, in that if you look at the signal to noise on the x-axis here, uh, the signal to noise ratio, of course, increases linearly as the current of your measurement goes along this y-axis here. But also, as you average or integrate or accumulate data for one nanosecond, a microsecond, a millisecond, or a second, you see your signal-to-noise ratio increasing this way. And so the way you would read this graph is if you need a signal-to-noise ratio of 10 to the fifth, and you can afford to do a measurement for one second, then the current you need is typically on the order of a little bit less than a nano -amp to get that signal-to-noise ratio in an ideal system. Uh, there's another thing I want to mention very briefly about signal to noise that doesn't apply to shot noise, but that applies to Johnson noise. Um, remember, Johnson noise is a voltage noise, and it's proportional to the square root of the resistance. So if I were, say, to have a photodiode, and I've got some photons coming in here I'm going to detect, and I'm going to get a current I noise due to Johnson noise out of that photodiode, and in order to detect this, I'm going to go through a resistor to change my, my current into a voltage V. And I have some voltage V in across there. Well, we know that the voltage noise in this case is just Johnson noise. So the current is simply V in over R. But we know because of this proportionality up here, that the Johnson noise is proportional. Let's write proportionality proportionality sign there to the square root of the resistance over R. So in Johnson noise, the I noise is proportional to 1 over the square root of the resistance. What does this mean for you doing a measurement? It means if you're using a photodiode or a photomultiplier tube, both of which are current sources and Johnson noise is important to you, you want to terminate that source with as high a resistor value as possible because small resistors lead to large, small denominators, which leads to increased current noise. OK. Now, as we saw, all three noise sources depend on the bandwidth of the measurement, delta F. Um, and in fact, given by the square root of delta F. And we also know that noise is usually specified in terms of volts or amps per square root of frequency bandwidth. What does this mean? 
It means that in order to reduce noise, the easiest solution in most measurements is simply to reduce the bandwidth of your measurement through some kind of filtering technique. And we'll talk about particular types of filtering techniques in future lectures. Um, let's look at an example. Let's say we run through an amplifier. We build a simple op-amp circuit. And we look at the data sheets for that op-amp. And it has a bandwidth of 1 megahertz. So we do nothing to close that bandwidth down. If our noise is 1 microvolts, and we modify, say, put some filtering elements in that amplifier and reduce it down to 10 kilohertz, the noise will be 10 times less. Just by reducing the bandwidth of our measurement system, we've reduced our noise by a factor of 10. Um, if we reduce the bandwidth down to 1 hertz from a megahertz, the noise will be 1,000 times less. But notice there are some trade-offs here. You can't have an infinitely narrow bandwidth because the bandwidth of the system the, in terms of delta frequency here, is proportional to 1 over 2 pi tau, where tau is the response time of the system. What this means is if I have an amplifier with a bandwidth of 1 hertz, or filter with a bandwidth of 1 hertz, the signal's going to take about a fifth of a second to change going through that amplifier. I can't measure very fast or transient events or quick changes through a narrow filter. The response time of a system is inversely proportional to the bandwidth. So if I want to have a system that can measure things on fast times, I have to open up the bandwidth and I'm going to suffer more noise. Um, another thing to notice is that oftentimes when you look at photo detectors, you have a specification. and This is a very valuable specification given in terms of noise equivalent power. or MEP, and the noise equivalent power of a photodetector is specified or defined to be the amount of noise current in terms of amps per square root of hertz divided by the sensitivity we looked about, we talked about when we looked at photomultipliers and photodiodes, so if you don't remember sensitivity, go back and, and look at those mini lectures, and of course that's given in terms of amps per watt. When we divide the noise current by the sensitivity, we get the noise equivalent power which is given in terms of watts per square root of hertz. What does this mean? If a photodiode were to have an NEP, and let's take a value of, say, 10 to the minus 15 watts per square root of hertz, it means that if I have a measurement system with a 1 hertz bandwidth, a very, very narrow filter, the signal-to-noise ratio I measure from that photodiode in an ideal case is going to be equivalent to the signal that 10 to the minus 15 watts would give me. That's where my signal-to-noise ratio is equal to 1, and that means the smallest signal I'll be able to detect is 10 to the minus 15 watts. Of course, if my filtering system on my electronics have a bandwidth of 100 hertz, right? then the noise equivalent power of 10 to the minus 15 watts per square root of hertz times a bandwidth of 100 hertz gives me a minimum sensitivity of 10 to the minus 14 watts because of that square root term. So the noise equivalent power really tells you the smallest optical signal you can detect or the smallest optical power you can detect given the bandwidth of your system. Now, I've really covered this in quick and dirty detail. There's a lot more. You could take an entire course on noise and electronic systems, and it's a very important topic on how to reduce noise. If you want to learn more about this, look at the hyperlink right here, uh, because a lot of what I've, I've shown you comes from Stanford Research Systems application notes. And this PDF file, which is your reading assignment for this day, or can be downloaded about from this website, gives you a lot more information as a really valuable guide to understanding noise and how it affects electrical and photonic measurements.